Hello, and thanks for joining me for another episode of Ask Kate. I'm Kate, your host, and this is a production brought to you by the Children's Tumor Foundation, aiming to offer education and support to the NF community. Generally, in these videos, I'll cover topics that come to me from the NF community. So it's meant really for what we might call our NF insiders, people who are already familiar with NF and affected by it in some way, whether it's themselves or someone in their family or their circle of friends. Today, I thought it might be helpful to cover some basic information um, that if you have a friend or you want to educate your community a little bit about NF, here's a quick video that they can watch as they're scrolling their social media feed that will give them some more information about exactly uh, what NF is. So we're going to discuss the fact that there are actually three types of NF, neurofibromatosis type 1, neurofibromatosis type 2, and schwannomatosis. Obviously these are very big words, which is one reason why we often call it NF1 and NF2, just to make it a little easier. Um, and today we're going to talk just a little bit about how these are different and uh, a little bit about how they're similar. So to start, all three of these conditions um, are pre tumor predisposition syndromes, which means that people with these conditions are prone to developing uh, different types of tumors. One of the things that makes them different is the type of tumor that we will see and, and where they grow. So we're going to keep it pretty simple, but basically in NF1, well in all types of NF, there are clinical criteria which means that we are going to be looking for certain things in a patient to decide whether this is an appropriate diagnosis for them. NF1 is a diagnosis that's based largely on skin findings that a doctor could see, a pediatrician could even notice, um, just in a regular well visit. So these are cafe au lait spots, which are large, flat birthmarks. Um, and one or two or three birthmarks can be very normal in the general population in a diagnostic a visit for NF1, we're looking for a certain number of cafe au lait spots of a certain size. Uh, that's when we start to become concerned. There can also be freckling that we'll see under the arms and in the groin. Those two specific areas is what we're looking for. And they can also have tumors that grow behind their eyes on the nerve that runs behind the eye. They can also develop lish nodules, which is basically just freckles that happen in the colored part of your eye. Um, those are harmless, um, but they are an indicator of a diagnosis. Um, patients with NF1 can also present with certain types of other types of tumors, as well as bone deformities like a scoliosis, which is a curving of the spine, or a pseudoarthrosis, which is when a long bone basically tries to form an extra joint, and then you can have a bowing in that long bone. Um, a family history of NF1 is also an indicator that we might need to look a little more closely at a patient. In NF2, the diagnostic criteria is based largely on the location and types of tumors that might develop. There can also be juvenile cataracts, as well as any family history. And in schwannomatosis, again, we're going to be looking for a specific type of tumor growing in specific places, as well, again, as any family history. So in NF1, we see that it affects 1 in 3,000 live births each year. It doesn't discriminate on gender or race or ethnicity or location. And half of these are spontaneous, meaning this is the first person in the family with NF1. The other half of these are inherited. NF1 is an autosomal dominant, which is a fancy way of saying that you cannot carry, you cannot be a carrier for NF1. If you have the mutation, you have the condition. Um, so if a, a man or a woman has a child and, and that man or woman has NF1 themselves, then each baby that they, um, that they have is basically like a, a coin toss that that child will have a 50-50 chance of also developing or having NF1. In NF2, it's less common, 1 in 25,000 births, and again, half of these are spontaneous and half are inherited from a parent. In schwannomatosis, we're estimating approximately 1 in 40,000 births, and about 15% of these cases are inherited, but we are still working pretty hard on understanding the genetics of all of these conditions. Um, so this information is um, always developing and we're always learning more um, to, to be better at making these diagnoses so people can get the help and the care that they need. Um, we generally diagnose NF1 in infancy or childhood, NF2 more commonly later childhood or early adulthood, and schwannomatosis generally not until um, later later adulthood. So 
In NF1, the main concerns for patients that, so if you know somebody who has NF1, they're going to be concerned about functional issues. If they have tumors that are causing problems with the way their body works, they'll have cosmetic issues because they can get um, neurofibromas, which are benign tumors that grow along the peripheral nerves. And these will just look like little bumps on the skin. Um, and there are, there are other issues that can just be frustrating for someone living with NF1 that can make them look or feel different. Um, and so those are, those are big concerns. We also look for, there's a risk of malignancy. So the tumors in NF1 are what we call benign, which means they're not cancerous, but there is a risk as they get older that some of these tumors um, could become cancerous. And so that's something that their doctors are watching for. Also, children with NF1, children and adults, can have um, learning disabilities and extra challenges um, for them when it comes to being in school and um, learning and, and um, just having feeling successful in that environment can, for some people with NF1, be a challenge. In NF2, their main concerns are going to be uh, functional again. They develop tumors often that grow on the auditory nerve, so that's the, the nerve uh, for hearing, and it's also for balance. And so this um, can cause issues with balance and walking. Also, it can cause loss of hearing. Uh, those types of issues are, are very significant in NF2. In schwannomatosis, uh, honestly, the largest concern and the, the thing that is most debilitating is that it is a painful syndrome. And so the tumors they develop, um, for reasons that we are still trying to understand better, uh, because uh, cause a lot of chronic pain for adults living with schwannomatosis. So that, that's generally their, their largest uh, and most significant concern. So the last thing I'll say about these three conditions um, really is just that they are different. Um, there are reasons that are complex that I won't, I won't get into in this video as to why they get lumped together and the research surrounding them um, is often connected and closely related and why the Children's Tumor Foundation is dedicated to supporting and funding research for all three of these conditions. And, um, and we are actively a part of pursuing the research that we believe will find effective treatments and one day a cure for all three types of NF. So I hope this has been a helpful, really simple um, primer, or beginning uh, information about what NF is and, um, and how it affects people who are living with it. If you have questions about anything I've said today or if it wasn't clear, please, again, my contact information should be right down here. You could also just leave a comment here on the YouTube page and I will be trying to check those. And thank you so much again for joining us today for this episode of Ask Kate.